Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Christy, if you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, it's so great to see you. I am participating in the Three Rivers Challenge in this video. Um, I will confess I did go grocery shopping today and uh, whatnot. I do have some pretty um, loose rules when it comes to this challenge this year, simply because there's lots going on. Um, and, uh, but I wanted to bring you this video today to inspire you. So, um, I'm keeping it very simple. Um, the recipes today that I'm sharing with you, uh, they're kind of just methods more so than recipes because they're so interchangeable. I use these recipes, um, interchangeably within our lifestyle and I use them interchangeably with what I have on hand that I've grown what I have on hand that I can buy in bulk or on sale, and what I have on hand um, that I have preserved. So um, in the first recipe you're gonna see today, or the first method, I'm making an apple crisp, and this is super interchangeable, as I'll explain in the video, but um, I can use products out of my pantry shelf, like canned goods, um, whether it is just regular canned fruit, um, or I can use a pie filling if I choose to, or I can use frozen berries out of the freezer, or I can do what I did in the video. And then the toppings, I can also interchange those with different um, types of fats and different types of grains. So I've actually even used quinoa before instead of oats. So it's very interchangeable. A person can just play around with it and do whatever you wish um, with these recipes. They're super simple and delicious. And the other one I did, I did a kind of like a freezer door toss in and pantry shelf toss in. So the second um, meal that I'm or method that I'm showing you is just a really basic soup that I um, I actually ordered some wontons a while ago and I have a case of them in the freezer because they're so handy for really quick and easy meals. Um, and so that's one of the, the things that I like to do is buy things in bulk or buy a case of it to have as a convenience or make something like dumplings to have in the freezer. Um, so this is, you'll see me make this video using some of the produce that we preserved this year in some previous vlog videos um, on my channel. Um, and then I also used a lot of freeze dried and dehydrated um, vegetables in this to for my seasonings and whatnot as well as some fresh carrots that i have stored in my fridge um, this is another recipe that's very interchangeable as long as you have your you know you can just kind of toss stuff in there and make it taste good it's really it's just really reaching for things out of your pantry and not being afraid to try new things um and then the third one is my tried and true kind of like a dump and go meal but today i um i'm going to kind of give you some uh, uh, overview of how i like to do these um, meals on you know using homestead food that's been preserved or what's in the pantry so uh, um one of the things that i like about making this um, casserole kind of dish is that i can do it as a freezer meal um, and then I can heat it up. Or what I could do is I could buy, you know, a case of chicken um, on sale, some chicken breasts and some chicken thighs. If they're on sale, watch for a deal and I can cook them all up and just kind of freeze them individually. And if I know I'm gonna have a busy night um, and I don't know what time dinner is gonna be specifically because of, you know, our schedules, I can just easily assemble um, the bottom layers with rice and, um, you know, whatever seasoning I'm choosing to use, whether I'm using salsa, regular salsa, enchilada sauce, Thai sauce. Um, I have like a curry, like a green green tomato curry sauce. Um, I could interchange it with barbecue sauce. I can interchange it with salt, like uh, spaghetti sauce if I wish. Um, the, the possibilities are endless. Whatever's on the pantry shelf, you can kind of smother that on there put the chicken that's already cooked in the freezer um, on top and then put whatever topping you desire, whether it be cheese or, um, you know, gr grating up some cashews or even putting pesto, whatever you choose to do, you can, it's really simple. Um, and uh, I like to do this with our own, with our own processed animals or birds as well. So from our own 
from our own animals that we processed and stuff I've, I've used this method as for as well so there's so many possibilities um you just have to kind of be willing to experiment and try things and you can come up with some pretty great meals i wanted to say the corn in this video that i prepared i have tried multiple ways of preparing corn and i will tell you that many of our viewers thank you by the way thank you so much for sharing this tip with me because i wouldn't have known um the method of cutting the ends and freezing the corn without blanching and just whole with the um outside still on it this was the best method i have found for preserving corn thus far they the corn was really really delicious I really like it and in the future I will be always doing this way. No more shucking corn. I'm done with that. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing the corn on the cob this way and not fussing with the blanching and the texture was great and everything. I'm really happy with it. So I highly recommend um, you know, growing some great varieties of corn this coming season that you can, um, that, that are freezer stable that you can actually put in the freezer. I have a video I will link below of the varieties that I grew and which ones they, like they worked really, really well for this. All of them did. So I will link that video below for you to check it out. If you want to know what varieties of corn that I grew in our very short season, by the way, I'm in zone two. We have about a hundred day growing season and I had amazing corn this year. So um, the varieties that I have may be some interest to you if you have a short growing season. So maybe it'll bring some success just with a little knowledge that I have to share with you. So, um, okay, enough chit chat. Let's get cooking and making some recipes here. So this is my um, tried and true kind of method for doing apple crisps and I like to use fresh apples for this I know lots of people use canned apples but this is the beauty of this recipe I can use fresh apples I could use frozen um, blueberries or mixed berries rhubarb it doesn't matter I can do this recipe with whatever type of fruit I have on hand and um, whether, you know, they're fresh ones needing to be used up like this apple, it started to go bad. I'm just cutting away the good parts and giving the bad part to the chicken, chicken. So basically I'm just roughly chopping this up into a pie plate and there is no right or wrong way to do this. Basically the goal is to cut them in pieces that they won't take too long to cook down and make, become soft but uh, long enough or big enough that they're not going to just be like a sauce so anyway um so i'm just using apples i have used every type of fruit you could possibly think of and i've mixed different fruits you the sky is the limit you can do whatever you want if you have fresh fruit like canned peaches with the juice keep scoop the juice out and just slice up the peaches and season it how you wish. I'm going to do cinnamon and brown sugar, but it, you can you can swap that out. You can do whatever type of seasoning. You can put pumpkin pie seasoning in here if you want. You can put uh, chai if you want. Like you can do whatever you wish. I'm doing a sweetener, which is sugar. I'm doing uh, just all-purpose flour and oats with mar or butter. Um, so I'm doing one cup of oats and half of a cup of flour. So you can interchange this as well. Um, and I'm also using this white, uh, white cane sugar, but I could, I have used coconut sugar in the past and I'm just doing it about a quarter of a cup and blending it together. The grains you can swap out, the oats you can swap out for quinoa or, um, you can do it with like crushed almonds or almond pieces I've done that before in cashew pieces and the flour you can use any type of flour I've done rice flour I've even done chickpea flour I've done um, gluten-free flour it doesn't matter whatever you desire and whatever is on your shelf you can make this work for the fats I'm using butter and I used about a half of a cup or not quite a half probably about a third of a cup of butter you can actually use shortening you can use lard you can use whatever you want. Whatever you have on your pantry shelf, use it. 
it is completely fine. You can use bacon grease if you if you wish. Um, you just want to make little kind of like bits and pieces. It's all going to cook and melt together and come together as a crust. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just wing it. <laughs> and that's all you have to do. Pretend you're a kid in, in a home ec classroom for the first time and have fun. That's basically what this is about. Um, you just wing it, throw it together. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. I know baking is a science, but when you're homestead cooking, it's kind of not. It's intuition and creativity and spontaneousness and inspiration and wonder. That's what homestead kitchen cooking is about. It's about throwing the rule book to the side and just kind of just getting creative. And that's the beauty. That's why I love um, rustic cooking or homestead cooking, cooking what's on the pantry. So basically I just dumped that crumbly stuff on top and baked it. And I baked it until I put a knife in and the apples were soft. I think it was 40 minutes. I don't know. I don't set timers in my house. I know that would annoy people, but yeah. let's see what the expert says. That's really good. How many chance stars does that get you? An easy 10. Cool. Thanks, man. So Chaz's favorite way to eat this is with a little bit of ice cream on top and a little bit warm, while it's a little bit warm, but you can have it however you wish. Now we're gonna do some soup. I have some carrots that I chopped up that were in the fridge and some broccoli. And these are some wontons that I ordered. Um, they were in the pantry. Garlic, I ended up not using that. These are leek tops and they are my favorite new thing for freeze drying. These are onions that are freeze dried and then that's some ginger that is dehydrated or freeze dried, I can't remember. And then the crushed chili peppers, of course, soy sauce, rice vinegar, and sesame oil. Um, that's what we're gonna use today. So I had some water boiling. I would have liked to have used some chicken stock, but I was just didn't feel like going and getting it. So I just used water and uh, threw the wontons in there with a half of a bag of broccoli and then those chopped up carrots that I had and the carrots are homegrown the broccoli is homegrown these are freeze-dried garlic that I grew this this season or past season and I didn't want bits and pieces of garlic in it because I don't like that so I threw in the whole garlic so we could kind of fish them out then I added some ginger um, some onions and some chili flakes now this is the leek tops and I love the leek tops in here. It is so delicious. Next year or this coming season, I am definitely going to grow some bok choy so I can freeze dry bok choy or put it in freezer bags, kind of like I did with the broccoli. So I can make this with a little bit of that bok choy in here and I think it would be delicious. I added some sesame oil, just a little bit, and then some rice vinegar. I think about three tablespoons is what it ended up being. I kind of just, I do this to taste. I don't have an exact number I can give you. The soy sauce, I did the same thing, about three tablespoons, and I just do it to taste. And um, every person is going to like things a little bit different. And, you know, the flavor of your vegetables is going to alter. Um, the time of season that the vegetables were processed is gonna, it's going to alter. So you're going to have to do this by taste. Um, that's what I do. I, I tasted it and I'm like, okay, this needs something. So I added a little bit of like chicken oxo um, and it just, that was, that's exactly what it needed. It was just that little bit of saltiness and that little bit of flavor. And then it tasted just like, actually it tasted just like takeout, which was great because that's like my favorite thing in the world. So this is interchangeable. I mean, I, I've done this with cauliflower, bok choy, celery, uh, radishes. I put shrimp in here before, leftover chicken. You can, the, the possibilities are endless. It's super simple and it, it is so delicious. I bought the, the wontons, but I mean, a person could make dumplings or make your own wontons. Just get the wrappers and do a big batch of them. It was delicious. Chaz ate two ginormous bowls of this. He cleaned it right up. 
it was really good. Now we're going to move on to making dinner. Now, I would I what I like to do is I like to fry up a whole bunch of chicken breasts and cook them all the way through and then cool them on cafeteria trays in the freezer so that they flash freeze and then store them in uh, freezer bags so I can grab them fully cooked and use them in place of where what I'm using these for um, but today I didn't have any of those done so I'm just cooking them up to make this dish so what I'm doing here is I'm seasoning with just an all-purpose seasoning and I had seasoned it with pep black pepper as well um, I love using lemon pepper but I'm I'm out and I also added some granulated garlic to these chick this chicken as well and gave it a flip cooking it on both sides and I like to press my chicken breasts um I find they cook a little bit nicer and they stay a little bit more moist I like that juicy chicken um I don't like it dried out and so pressing it is what I like to do so this is the corn hack last fall when I harvested my corn I shucked a lot of it, but some of our viewers suggested to chop the ends off and leave that a couple, you know, just take a few layers off of the outside of the corn um, and leave it in its like husk or whatever it's called. And so that's what I did. And this was given it a shot. I put it in some boiling water and cooked it just regular, just like it was fresh corn. And you know what? <laughs> it was so good. I've done frozen corn on the cob before where I blanched it and Tyson won't eat it. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like the texture. He actually ate this and he said it was good. So it really, I, I really am glad that I tried this method and I will definitely be trying it again. So thank you for informing me of this. It was, it was really delicious and I will be definitely doing it again in the future. So again, if you're new to freezing corn in this method, so basically you don't blanch it, you just cut the ends off, take a few wraps of the outside uh, husk. Is that what it's called? A husk? Please correct me. I'm, bl I'm blanking today. Um, and you just freeze it like that. And when you're ready to use it, you pull it out of the freezer. I let these thaw out for like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. So it was easier to take the outside off. And I popped them in water and just like I was cooking regular corn. And uh, so yeah, worked out good. So the chicken's done. What I'm doing here is I have some cilantro, cilantro lime rice. So basically it's cilantro with lime juice in rice as it cooked with some pepper. Um, you can do whatever type of rice you want, plain um, fried rice, if you have leftover fried rice, or you could do raw rice if you want, if you're cooking it longer, you just have to add more liquid. But basically this was hot rice, I heated it up in the quick cooker, and um, it was just cilantro lime in this. Any type of rice though you can add. Then I added, I had a half of a jar of my nectarine salsa. I had used this in another video, from last week I wanted to use this up um, and so I thought this would be a great way so I just poured that nectarine salsa on top of the rice and then I applied the chicken breast on top so I what I would do is I would if I didn't have this kind of salsa I could do um, freeze-dried veggies with other types of salsa or tomato sauce or um, salsa verde, whatever I choose I want to do. My curry sauce, I made a, a curry, to, a green tomato curry sauce. I could put that on there and do the same thing. Put the chicken breast and top it with cheese. I had a salad in the fridge with some of our lettuce that we harvested last week and, um, or this, not last week, this, I guess like two days ago last week, like my last week, not our last week in the last video, but my last week. So I wanted to bulk it up and I cut up a cucumber. So that was what it looked like when it came out of the oven. Um, basically, it, it was just really quick and easy. It was a very sweet and spicy dish. It was very, it was very good. I liked the salsa, the, the nectarine salsa in this dish. I never had done it with the nectarine salsa before. I've done it with like regular salsa. Um, and it was really good with the nectarine as well. So 
something to definitely consider if you have made like a peach salsa or nectarine salsa. It's really delicious this way. Um, the chicken was tender and juicy. It was so good. Very delicious. I hope that you found today's video a little bit inspiring at least. And I'm curious to know um, if you are doing the pantry challenge as well and how it's going for you, if you're finding any challenges. I will tell you today I did buy a few things like fresh fruit. The reason I did that is because um, we have often not had a lot of fresh fruit up in our area recently and when it does come into stock I would really you know I like to jump on it and get it and one support our local grocery store and two you know you can only go so long without oranges before you really crave them. I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here and I appreciate you spending the time with me to see what I'm cooking up on off of my pantry shelves. So take care you guys. Much love. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now. By the way, if you were here for when I sown some uh, lettuce seeds to see if I could grow them under grow lights, I'll show you the progress here. Just one sec, I'll flip you around. If you missed seeing that video, I will link that one below for you too. And how fast does the tower garden grow lettuce? I harvested that yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. Whew, she's growing good. See you next time.